just thought of his other job. Really? I did the thing of the danger. If you didn't know your job, then you wouldn't. I definitely wouldn't be hired there. I was in a way of danger. No, no, I didn't even realize. With what they were doing, how dangerous it would be. I just wanted the money. I got a fire. I got a fire. I got a fire. I think the My first career was in the IT industry. I worked as a software engineer for the big IT company, and they did very well there. But then I got sick. I got diagnosed with multiple sclerosis in 1992, and my employer decided that it would probably be better if I went on long-term disability instead of trying got to juggle, juggle family and carers and just it was too, just too much with the miss and then I had to re rediscover who the was. I started looking into writing. It gave me a creative outlet academic and I can do it at home as a miss dictates. You know, the last thing you want is to be at home feeling sorry for yourself because you know your lot in life. Your circumstances so I went back to school. I went and wrote it in the school of journalists at Richardson how to learn how to write. The instructors say you need to write that. You know, okay, so I feel like I should scarf her off. I was born in Scarborough, raised in Scarborough, have lived all over Scarborough. By the time I was 20 years old, I had 14 different addresses to cut home. So imagine my surprise. I was at my church and I overheard a conversation about this woman who worked in a munitions factory in Scarborough. Is that with were tunnels underneath? And then, no, there aren't any tunnels. There's no munition factory I know. Scarborough. I wanted her to tell me more, and she told me she worked in a munition factory and there were tunnels, and I was shocked. So that started me digging. I then discovered that there was a huge undertaking back in the Second World War and nobody knew about it. I started an informal report and the grocery lines of the supermarket awarding. And you know about the munitions plant, did you know that was worth 4 kilometers of tunnel under the city and nobody knew it like one of Scarborough's best kept secrets. To my research, when I discovered this where with over 21,000 people that worked there and that their story hadn't been recorded and that it was in end. A print hit war anywhere. I it was okay, I'm going to do this. And you just have to meet them. Do you know you get it in your heart, in your gut, and you say, okay, I'm going to write your stories. I had gone down and 
along the Dan Fort and this building was advertising for workers so we went in and here they were about it. Well, I mean I was only 16. So it was sort of mysterious to me. I was only making ten dollars at the week of the Delta food products and from from the street. And I saw this ad in the paper about world work. So it went there because it was fifteen dollars a week. I felt I should be doing something here. And I had been a housemaid and I left my job and started doing more work and it just seemed the things to do at this time. You always remember you, your first jobs really, really well. They came into my classroom and they wanted to interview us because they had a job for us. And I came home and told my parents that I had been offered this job at the munificent sums. In those days, $15 a week, which was unheard of, and I had to sign it out of secrecy. So I wondered what the heck I was getting into. Well, actually, I worked in an office, and I just did some filling and tip typing. That there were another girl that worked in this office too. I was making bullets that were make a brass ring, <coughs> and they had a paper like film in between the rings, and I had to put to up some kind on put the paper like sheet on and then the ring and pass it on to the next. <coughs> I had been offered a job in the president's office. The president of Jakov had a vocabulary like you would believe in a word that nobody else ever would have heard. No job. You can imagine taking dictation that was so technical but they were very forgiving you know, I would take the jokes out and then it went a correction, I would take them again. I was on the accident blind lines. It was an electric screwdriver to put the screw in tight, paint the fuzzes, some time to get the screw. You had to dab. You had to spin the things and then hold the brush. Act like trucking like they were long chart with wheels and you put it under the skid and left to the skid with 500 shoes on and two girls pushes and for one pulled to the receiving room and we used to go like anything down the hall and I was after we kind of went through them was left them. I want us fitness first, I just So thank you so much for inviting me here today to talk to you about one of my most favorite subjects in the whole wide world and that's Canada's farm girls. So one of the first thing I want you to do is I want to hand this out. These are, these are food that would fill not scarf off. Don't worry, it's not going to blow the lot. The plants were actually div divided into the dirty side and the clean side and not dirty as in dirty, but dirty as in the not related to munition filled in seals 
the cafeteria, the medical building, a clean site, other plant. The vast majority of the plants were in the clean site, and that's where these juice were filmed. So it has to be spruce time. So clean. No speck of dirt, no grime, no dust, because nothing could cause a spark. You didn't want all the round high explosives. Well, at so the very beginning, I was just at what they call the dirty side, where the administration buildings were so I didn't move to the clean side, and you had to go through on the rear where you left all of your old clothing behind we have to go in and get out of our street clothes and get into an old cotton. We couldn't wear anything metal. No bobby pins, no jewelry. We couldn't have hopes and eyes on our brows. Even because of the friction, I guess we had to go over a border. One lady at each side and said, all clear and they then work will work to crew hard of air conditioned covered wind will last galleries and they would travel to these galleries until they go to, to the other workshop. Women prefers gunpowder because she trails on high explosive sites was more volatile. It was more dangerous and the powder could stay in your hands. Yellow, your face, your head. It could also cause a rash. And you put your arms in, and the powder will look there. Yes, you put it in into a demo, the containers, and I had that job. That job I had. Yellow hands, yellow around here. And it was just at the doctor and he said, well, that might might have at the your health, but it was healthy all the time. But when you're working around high explosives, what is it can butter or tea, let's fight. It is it's very dangerous work. There is a risk of inflations. Well, you have to be careful. And one girl, she was a real little monkey, and she was over on the clean side. And she wanted to make something a little bit interesting happening. Where is what? She took a paper bag and water, blew it up slack. Well, you don't. Do that when they the process around that she would definitely to she had to go work in the administration to could work at the shop anymore. It's just a drill for me when I come to the evenings when I'm speaking and find out that there the bump current in additives. And today is in no exception. And it just it just I'm so drilled. Just recently at the talk that I did, I was introduced to the Bob girl, and her name was Melis. She was, and she was 97 years old, and she was able to share with me how she feel the entertainers or girls. When we feel the entertainers put in a metal stand, and she. And we had an old fashioned pocket watch each one of it. And we had to put the lever down to tamp down the tape and just yes, and we had to be a perfect 15 seconds. <coughs> just to give perspective of what it means to feel the detonator is wanting to be on a high explosive side and to work with this yellow powder to draw powder. It was another thing to be feeling the detainers. The detainers were tiny, tiny. I'd be told that the other side of your top now. And she had to put 
Polly and Dee's dead retainers. And this, they have the stem all spread it down and it's had to be perfect. Perfect. And it wasn't if she's tapping it too hard or if it was <coughs> lost sided, it would explode. That's how little. And how they did her job was. She wasn't concerned about the danger at all. She just wanted to work. She just wanted to be part of it. And she said, when it's your time, it's your time. And it's not your time. It's not your time. And what a wonderful philosophy she had for her life. So it also will remain exist a little speed to see if you recognize anything from your days as she goes. I shall I take a look. Tried. So the benefits of working there in terms of performers, moral point of view, and even from the industrial relation point of view, they had all the amenities that you could ever want. You think about today, you know, you think of Google and there they're trying to make things more. I'm accommodating to the employees. Chico has us in space. They had badminton, they had ingles, they had baseball, they had ping pong tables, and they, they, they actually set up a rec center at Chico. You talk about playing badminton at lunch. Yeah. Oh, for Peter's sake, yes. How it hit me. I played badminton. Every day at noon, and I would go back to work. But, so anything that were involved in sports, I was more interested in that. Which one is you? <coughs> And it would be this one here. I know that you could play ping pong. I haven't played baseball. But no, there was a lot of activities like that you could do. The offers. Skating rings right on site. If they wanted to go skiing with the winter, they had a beauty pavilion. Do you know what the other lady is doing there? So they're part of the beauty pageant. Out. All in there for you, don't fit. Well, they want me go in a beauty contest there. I did do, but my girlfriend did, and she won. So those would be the finalists in the beauty pageant. So very much of girls should be in that group in the Florence it can attest was cafeteria manager so she oversaw all the food operation at Chico, which you you can imagine was a huge undertaking. They could serve one one hundred in thirty minutes. So that's around thirty seven meals. Every six days, and they were not just you know, or happy meals, or you know, a hamburger, this thing with the phones, course meals, a drink, an appetizer, men's course, and this is well, they had a lovely cafeteria there. And if you had a lot of money, you might have had zero fifty five dollars for really super deluxe money, or you might just get another for the quarter. It was a little cafeteria. Oh, yes. Yes. I had just had lunch there because I had breakfast before I left home and uh, I had lunch there. These are beautiful pictures, aren't they? Would you pull down an employee? Newspaper called the Fulis Fulis Lears. 
During its first year of publication, they had a cartoon. It's pretty well almost in every issue, and the cartoons were drawn by the gentleman by the names of the Wish schools. He's been referred to as Canada's greatest cartoonist. He drew on cartoons that even leave morals in these worst women's lives. But one in particular is after the satyrs a dead piece in his picture the commandos and their warming public field at Chico's a scarborough ramming them down Hitler's road. Which Kali saying we're down, but we're not out. So yeah they're going to get them. We're going to get them, it's just going to take some time. So excited about today, I get to see my bomb girls. Would imagine one is nine ninety seven years old. So yeah, so we're talking to the down to the chicos. We're going to take them back seventy five years to see where they worked so long ago during the Second World World War, and that to me is very exciting. Okay, so maybe here. So maybe see you again. What are you doing? Not too bad. I love it. It's so nice to see you. So what are you working on? Well, I was making detonators because I didn't know what they were at the time. No, we didn't. Who are you? And how I'm going? You're going to go over there to the door, Gloria, this is Milius. Milius, how are you, Milius? And this is Phyllis. Phyllis, how do you do, Phyllis? So we work on a high explosive site, yes. You did, I did too. Yet I went on yellow, did, yeah. Yeah, well, I am up here. And say welcome back to Chico's. The name is Emily. Millions feels until this fellow's feels. And that, Bad Betty. Built Betty, Phyllis, Millions, and Yield. So they brought the map, which you can all have. I think I would have copies or but not, but this is a map of the entire Chico site where you were so long ago. We are right here. Right there, right here. It's called the Clean Site Office. Oh yes, I remember that. Do you remember the Clean Site Office? It is that amazing? Like you were all here, all doing your, your beat. As you said, right? Well, that's where this was. It was just a little bit. The workmanship that went into building Chico's, those original workshop, they were built entirely from wood, and they didn't expect that the work conflict of that material to last more than life years. This was their life expectancy. So how 2017? So many decades later, there are still 21 original buildings. When I look at the workshop, you know what original super structure is overhead. There is an awesome message about because I feel like I'm being strengthened back in time. If we get down to the tunnels, the tunnels are beautiful. They they're seeing a block and the ceilings are beautiful. We have never seen the light of day. How are you doing? Well, this is amazing to me. 
I never knew there were the tunnels under here when I worked there. I had no idea there were tunnels. I didn't know there were more than one building. Nope, and I never ever even knew where they were. Oh, of course, I knew about them. So they had this extensive tunnel system, but it was made for the infrastructure of the plant. Everything that you needed to run and the building was buried. And why did you bury it? Because if there was ever an explosion, one of the buildings above ground production wouldn't stop in the surrounding buildings. For the first time in cannabis history, the women were brought out from their homes. They doffed their aprons as it were, and they put up their overalls and got into the factories. You have to realize that back in those days, women buy large stay homes and raise their children. They were Disney French and Latin to change the diapers and scrub floors and that's all that was expected of women at that time. I couldn't quite grasp, grasp the idea that all these women were doing this thing and they all had kids at home. So for the women to all of a sudden go out to work and work on the production line that was a major lifestyle change and work shifts. It changed the landscape for women in a workplace. There were opportunities. Women had established themselves. It was traumatic for the women who had the jobs. And then all of a sudden, all the men would come home and the jobs would come. <coughs> I have to say, it must have been a major adaptation for them. So I want to start the research to find out what was it top secret munition plant and the tunnels under Skabarov. It was more about the current city. I wanted to know more about my city. And when I start actually talking to these lovely pumps girls and I really see where actual live human beings, beautiful Beautiful women who we in another era, in another time, in their lives, had done these phenomenal things. I did think a lot about it until Barbara started the in the book, and then I really enjoyed reading the book. I just want to have a sense of pride over having worked in a munition plant, but they have a sense of pride in what was instructed to me and what I were capable of doing. I really think I was too young to realize, you know, like how important everything that we were doing was. I felt a sense of pride that I was finally doing something to help the war. I would, it would just say staying there in Canada where we were perfectly safe. It was just what everybody was doing. I want us to pay tribute to ladies and 17,000 women that worked there.
and not to mention the countless thousands of women that work across Canada during the war. When I meet a Bond girl who stay alive today, I just want to hug her. <coughs> I just want to tell her how much we appreciated what she did for her country during the war because until recently, no one actually ever thanked them. No one actually ever told them to did a great job. They. It's like the way we have forgotten, and I don't want them to be forgotten anymore.